So we heard you guys loud and clear. We did exactly what you guys requested. We cannibalized one of the greatest, most legendary two-stroke dirt bikes and stuck it in a very rare Harley-Davidson 883R, making the 500 Harley-Davidson R. So the Indian guys hate me because of this video that I did. The Harley guys hate me because of a video we did a couple weeks ago where we put a Harbor Freight motor inside of a Harley Davidson Ultra Classic. Now I think I've burned down all my bridges with my Honda friends because I may have done the worst thing possible to a legendary Honda. The CR500 is a legend. It started production in 1984 and ceased production in 2001. It made a whopping 60 horsepower and weighed 230 pounds, which is just bonkers for a motorcycle. And even 20 years later, it's still haunting the trails, the desert, and the tracks. And here's the guy that made this all possible, Craig. Craig, what's happening, Craig? What's happening, buddy? And listen, guys, hold on. Stop sending Craig messages. <laughs> For, to have him trying to build your crazy Frankenstein projects. He's under contract. He's only building crazy stuff for me. But Jeremy, I'm working on that cat one for you. Craig, this is amazing. Thank you. All right, so this all kind of started when I found a Harley Davidson uh, 883R, which, which the R's are fairly rare on Facebook Marketplace for like 1500 bucks because I had a blown motor. I went to Philly, went and picked it up. And I, I, I knew it was a perfect bike for some type of engine swap. Then we found a, um, did you find it or I found it? You found it. Found a CR, a 1990 CR 500. Perfect shape, the whole thing. It was almost, it was cheaper to buy the whole thing than to buy any parts of it. And this is actually my first time seeing this motorcycle. Did you, did, did, you, like did it? you make this a rigid? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Why is it a rigid? <laughs> Oh. This is going to be so horrible to ride. I'm trying to tell people this is the greatest motorcycle ever. And <laughs> these, these are doing you, you nothing. You want to feel the road, you know? You're like, you, you want to know what's going on underneath. Yeah. So not only is there no rear suspension, this is all the padding you get. That's it. All right. So we're not really taking this thing off-road, are we? Sure. Yeah. We can. Yeah. No. So why exactly did you make it a rigid? <laughs> so the, after, the first, uh, after the first ride, I realized that the rubber bushings... Uh, the stock Harley rubber bushings that, that, that hold the swing arm and the frame and everything together here, um, they, they just weren't strong enough. So the back end was weebly wobbly all over the place. Oh, you, you, you're saying that because the actual motor and, 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 so, and, and transmission are part of, the, are are part part of, the, of uh, the... Yeah, so what we had to do was cut the back of the engine case off. The engine case was already broke. The, right. You know, the motor was in, in, in right. boxes. So we cut the back of the engine off to keep the spacer um, between the swing arm and the frame. And then the, the rubber bushings that they use as dampeners, uh, they, they just weren't, they weren't strong enough to hold the, the power of the motor and, and keep everything straight. So the other thing I noticed was that the Harley, normally the drive belt's on the right side. Yeah, on the sports. And the Honda is on, on, the, on, just on the sports. And then on the Honda, it's on the left side. How did we fix that? Yeah. So what we did was flip the wheel, flip the tire. Flip the bearings. Yes, <laughs> flip the bearings. So the swing arm here is a little bit fatter on this side than it is on the other side. So I had my friend Jason at Practical Machining Services mill out the brake caliper mount so it would fit on that side of the swing arm, flipped everything around, stock spacers all worked, made the, made the engine uh, spaced out correctly, and, and yeah. And then we used, uh, we, got that, we got a zipper kit? Yep, we got a... Sprocket kit to uh, convert it from belt to chain? Yes. Yeah. Was, it, was, that, was that a bolt on? Yeah, pretty much. So Zipper has um, Zipper has a bunch of different sprocket combinations and stuff uh, for doing custom applications. Uh, we ended up getting their rear sprocket in a 48 tooth uh, with a quarter inch offset so the chain would clear the rear tire. Uh, the only problem we ran into is everything Zipper makes is for 530 chain. Right, because you want a thicker chain for a bigger, more, for more power. More, more power, more power battery. Weight. Yeah, exactly. The, the CR500 is a 520 chain, and that doesn't have the clearance for a 530. So we had to convert the 530 rear sprocket to 520. Uh, and again, that was as simple as sending it down to Jason and having him uh, cut it down a little bit for us. Does the speedometer work at all? 
No. Does any, does the, no none of the electronics actually work, do they? Nope. Let's pretend they do. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, what happens when you try to kickstart this thing when I'm wearing proper motocross boots? It hurts you. I mean, this is a, <laughs> it's a, it's a, this is a It hurts you bad. It's a dangerous, it's kind of a dangerous uh, dirt it, bike. Yeah, you don't want to be kicking this with sneakers on. Ask me how I know that. That's crazy. Oh, my ankle healed. Let's go take this thing outside and fire it up. Awesome. This thing feels light. This thing feels like the weight of a, a dirt bike. Yeah, yeah. I figured we pulled 200 pounds off and uh, added 10 horsepower. This is we amazing. pulled uh, 130 pounds off the motor alone. Just the engine swap saved us 130 pounds. Wow. Yeah. This is possibly the coolest thing I've ever rode and will easily drown out any other motorcycle on the streets. Let's take this thing south of the border and see how it stacks up against a stock Harley Davidson 883 Sportster. I was extremely impressed that it outperformed the Harley 883, which is the slowest motorcycle Harley makes. So let's compare it to one of the fastest motorcycles that Harley makes, the CVO Screaming Eagle V-Rod. Then I decided to take this thing to the local Honda dealership and show them my masterpiece. We did it. We did it. You figured it out. You found it. That's sick. What do you think? That is sick. That is too cool. How many miles have you put on it so far? Uh, 30 or 40. That's the secret sauce. <laughs> Clorox. No. Oh. Smoky burnouts. No. <laughs> The Undertale exhaust is sick, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. So you gotta ride it. I gotta hear it. I gotta see it. Oh, what the hell is that? That's a CR500 Honda engine. <laughs> I've never yeah. seen that. That's What's in the cab? Of that's the not, that's some, I thought you could have some of that. Some of them other. Well, I did it. I took one of the most legendary big bore two stroke dirt bike engines and I stuck it in a Harley Davidson, making the world's greatest motorcycle. You gonna tell them the truth now? Okay, fine. Uh, this bike is basically horrible. All right, so let's start with the first day. So because two stroke motorcycles are, are lubricated not with the crankcase oil, but with oil that you mix inside the fuel, we decided to, to make the thing run a little bit richer so that it wouldn't blow up on the, uh, on the highway. Because two stroke dirt bikes are made to run like this. And normal street bikes are made to be able to do stuff like this. And because of this, we spent most of the first day trying to start the thing. That's the best bike ever. First bike. It's awesome. I want everyone to know, I want to, I want to let the record show. I think this is a great idea, super safe, and I love every bit about this idea. And here's the other thing. Have you ever heard someone say, well, y'all can ride it if you can start it. 
and then all the men all like puff up their chest and then now like they take on the challenge. I can't, I can't start the bike. I can't even start it. I was still recovering from a knee injury. I'm scared as anything to try to start that thing and you know, I might you know tear my knee more. Which is why a lot of the footage is Craig riding the bike. Now in the footage where I was riding the bike, you'll notice Craig was always near me in case I stalled the bike or couldn't get it fired back up. You'll also notice that Craig was wearing a motocross boot on his right leg in case he had to fire the thing up because he injured himself like fire, trying, to, trying to start it with regular boots on. Unless you're this kid and you're able to do it with skater shoes on, which I would not recommend or advise. And because it was something that Craig explained to me but I didn't completely understand, he decided to make this bike into a rigid, which means that there is no rear suspension. The only suspension on the bike is on the front end. There's also basically no seat pad. So every time you hit a bump, the minorest little bump or transition in the street, it was absolutely painful. All right, so at this moment, I know exactly what you're thinking. You're thinking, man up, stop being a baby, so what? It's kind of hard to start, and it's kind of uncomfortable to ride. So what? Still an awesome looking bike. That is true. Now we did solve the starting problem a little bit. We changed the jetting back to closer to stock and Craig was able to start this thing within one kick. But we also quickly realized that this bike was vibrating itself completely apart. And within 45 minutes of riding this thing, the majority of the bolts mounting the engine to the frame were just gone. Vibrated themselves apart. Ooh. There's two on this side, they're, they're about to fall out, but the other two are just gone. Wait, what was holding this motor in? Just the, the top one and maybe that? Yeah. Holy oh. cow. Oh, that weld broke. You see right there, the motor mount actually broke in half. And within 40 miles of riding it, we changed the spark plugs at least five times, which I guess is normal two-stroke stuff. I'm not a two-stroke guy, but it sounds like normal two-stroke stuff. But other than those things, this is the world's greatest motorcycle. Other than the fact that your chain guard, there's no chain guard, so you can actually feel the chain grinding into the side of your boot while you're riding it. Also, if you turn it off and let it sit on the, the kickstand without turning the fuel off, fuel starts dumping out of the carburetor. But with that being said, still the greatest motorcycle. And did you guys notice that even though this thing vibrates the bike apart, my phone mount on my Rockform phone mount was still perfectly still didn't need to be tightened at all. That's pretty impressive for that foam out. All right, so we had a blast of uh, putting this thing together, riding this thing. Let us know what you think we should do with this bike next. And if you like this video, you're gonna love this video right here. We'll see you guys later. Don't forget to subscribe.